In this video, we are going to go into more detail about security management systems. By the end of the videos, you should understand what risk is, understand the process of risk analysis, and understand the security management systems that manage that risk process. Security management is the overall process for managing security risk within an organization. There are several standards that set out the process, including accreditation and certification. ISO 27001 is a standard that requires that an organization has performed risk analysis to recognize their information assets and their associated information security risks based on threats, vulnerabilities, and impacts. That they've designed and implemented a coherent and comprehensive suite of information security controls and or other forms of risk treatment to address those risks and adopted a management process to monitor, review, and update risks and controls on an ongoing basis. There are other standards that are similar, and they include the Australia's Protective Security Policy Framework and the NIST Cybersecurity Framework. Many organisations implement a 27001-like security management system, but fail to go through and get certified. Although information security refers to non-digital assets, very few companies store non-digital information. Even if they use paper, it is usually archived digitally, for example. The security requirements come from three sources. Information security risks based on an organization's business strategies and objectives, the legal, statutory, regulatory and contractual obligations, and the principal objectives and business requirements for information processing that an organization has developed to support its operations. Central to these standards is a security policy. This outlines an organizational approach to security through a set of policies that cover internal organization, information security roles and responsibilities, segregation of duties, contact people, etc. Mobile devices and teleworking, employment, how you screen and onboard new staff, information security awareness and training, disciplinary processes and how you handle termination and offboarding. Asset management, uh, including the asset management life cycle of purchasing, uh, using and disposing of assets. Handling media and again having a life cycle around that. And implementing access control using user access management and system application access control. Further in the security policy, it will outline the use of cryptographic controls, the use of uh, encryption of devices and or documents, uh, especially when transmitting information or information at risk. The physical and environmental security, so security of rooms, offices, buildings, uh, how you protect against uh, adverse events. Things like operational security, communication security, and the process by which new systems are acquired, evaluated, developed and maintained, how you maintain relationships with suppliers, especially dealing with a supply chain, uh, dealing with incident management, and finally business continuity. So we've dealt with this before, just to recap, the OECD has a uh, strategy that they have uh, put together called the Dis Digital Recommendations for Digital Security Risk Management and outlines a process that all organizations should undertake by first defining the economic and social objectives of the organization, uh, define what activities they undertake in those realms to achieve those objectives, perform a risk assessment, uh, treat then that risk by taking the risk, reducing it, transferring it, or avoiding it. And then in the reduction of risk, implementing controls through security measures, innovating to reduce the risk um, by changing the process or the activity, and then preparing uh, for incidents um, by establishing resilience and continuity. And then having a process for monitoring and assessment of those controls 
uh, and the risks as they evolve because business activities are going to change and uh, equipment's going to change so the risk profiles will change as well as threats uh, so it's a uh, constantly evolving cycle so normally to assess risk what we do is what an organization will do is prepare for the assessment and that's you know derived from an organizational risk frame so essentially the organization will have established what its risk appetite is and that may come from a number of different sources the sector it operates in so uh, if you're dealing with uh, people's health for example you may be and quite rightly more risk averse than if you are uh, essentially selling ice creams uh, it also may come from regulatory and statutory um, uh, frames so if you are heavily regulated uh, industry uh, finance for example healthcare as I mentioned before then your level of tolerance of risk uh, may be lower you then have to conduct an assessment so you have to identify assets identify the threat sources and events identify the vulnerabilities and predisposing conditions determine the likelihood of occurrence determine the magnitude of impact and then determine the risk step three involves communicating those results and step four maintain the assessment so we've mentioned before that in assessing risk there are uh, two different approaches qualitative assessments and quantitative assessments in both cases you need to understand the business itself the assets a threat analysis and a vulnerability assessment in qualitative risk assessment the process by which you uh, assess risk may involve a range of different approaches so brainstorming is one where you sit in a room and try and come up with uh, a list of threats and vulnerabilities the Delphi technique which involves anonymous question and answers so that is uh, essentially posing those questions to business owners and getting answers about things so that you're not necessarily uh, putting anybody in a difficult situation sometimes talking about potential vulnerabilities and threats uh, within a department may be sensitive because uh, disclose it may be seen as disclosing an operational weakness for example that managers don't aren't keen to share so it's important in these situations to consider uh, anonymity of the participants so that you can arrive at a real evaluation of risk without uh, holding anybody accountable for those deficiencies storyboarding is another one where you go through scenarios uh, use cases for example and work out what potentially can happen in in certain situations focus groups bringing in groups of users and taking them through a structured interview uh, using general surveys and questionnaires and then finally checklists all of these can help in the communication of risks but uh, ultimately it's difficult to prioritize based on the range of values as i mentioned before uh, when you have a qualitative assessment so this is an example of a type of qualitative risk assessment and what the outcome might be so listed across in the columns are the assets and then on the rows are the threat sources the threat sources are split into natural environmental and human um, and the assets are split uh, into users office equipment client data internal data software etc you can see the different types of assets for each of the threat sources and the assets you then uh, decide what risk the, those threat sources pose on the assets through vulnerabilities notice that in this we're not explicitly detailing the vulnerabilities that would be exploited we're just coming out with some view that if there was a power outage for example that the risk to office equipment might be medium 
um, because there may be power shortages. Um, it would certainly affect the availability of those equipment, but uh, it wouldn't necessarily uh, stop them, you know, sort of the business from functioning. So if we look at the high risk things, uh, radio interference, for example, might affect connectivity. And in this case, they've determined that to be high. Um, machines and resource misuse is determined as high. And so from this uh, chart, the organization would focus on the high risk activities first and then the medium ones and then the uh, presumably could even leave the low risk uh, to uh, you know, actually take that risk. In quantitative risk assessment, we start with an asset valuation. We calculate an exposure factor, which is the percentage of that valuation that would be impacted by a threat working on a vulnerability. And from that, we can work out single loss expectancy, which is the asset valuation times the exposure factor. From that, then work out an annualized rate of occurrence. Um, and then an annualized loss expectancy. And then from that, work about out the cost benefit of any countermeasures that we might put in. And we went through an example of this in a previous video, as we did with this. So I won't go through this again. One type of risk uh, assessment process approach is called FAIR. And there's an open source version of this called OpenFAIR. FAIR is a factor analysis information risk, and that's adopted by the Open Group as an open standard. It's a quantitative risk analysis approach. The main difference in this approach is that everything is expressed in probabilities, and risk is defined as the probable frequency and probable magnitude of loss. So a vulnerability is the probability that a threat agent's actions will result in a loss. If it doesn't result in a loss, then it's, there is no risk involved. Controls are applied to risk and will reduce either the frequency of threat actions or the magnitude of the loss. So once risks have been identified, they can be reduced or mitigated. So we can use controls to reduce risk. They can be assigned or transferred, so transferred to a third party such as a cloud provider or use cyber insurance. They can be accepted or they can be deterred. So try and avoid the risk by using deterrences such as policies and warnings, security cameras, guards, fences, auditing, etc. Now, of course, these will operate at different levels and with different groups of people and will have different levels of effectiveness. The risk can be avoided, so we can change the business so that the risk um, is not no longer present. We can choose a different supplier or provider, for example, or we can reject it. it we can ex don't accept that the risk is being credible, um, and that's always, in and of itself, a risky uh, approach. Once a risk is treated, it's never the case that you will remove all risk entirely unless you have actually decided not to do that activity. So what remains is called the residual risk. So total risk is threats times vulnerabilities times asset value. And the risk reduction from treatment is controlled risk. Then residual risk equals total risk minus controlled risk. <coughs> 